Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am Falak Fazal and I am working as a scientific officer at Alpha Genomics. And in today's session, we will discuss about gel electrophoresis. So, right over here, I am running 1% egg rose gel for DNA qualitative analysis. The DNA I have already extracted and it is kept in this TE buffer. It is dissolved in TE buffer. And over here, I am using the uh, pipette uh, ranging from 2 microliter to 20 microliter. I will pick some 6 microliters of DNA. As you can see. And the tracking dye which I am using right now is bromophenol blue. This is the loading dye. This is 6x bromophenol blue and I have already prepared it. And I will pick uh, some 3 microliters of uh, the loading dye and I'll mix this DNA with the loading dye. So purpose of this bromophenol blue or this tracking dye is to make DNA heavier so it settles down in the wells of the gel prepared. So you can see that as I mix it uh, with the bromophenol blue it changes its color and it turns blue and it is loaded into the wells of this uh, prepared gel. Now, if we just talk about a bit about uh, the uh, gel, gel preparation, why are we using 1% gel and how is 1% gel being prepared? So, 1% gel is used for DNA, uh, for to run DNA because DNA, as you know, that DNA is, the total genomic DNA is quite heavier in nature. So, it requires a large pore size for its mobility across the current. So, for the purpose of uh, the purpose of this one person uh, gel is to provide enough space to the DNA molecules to just uh, start moving towards one uh, electrode towards the another electrode as per the charge. So, when we are uh, preparing the one person gel, we usually use uh, ethidium bromide. Ethidium bromide over here is an intercalating dye and the purpose of ethidium bromide is to bind with the minor group of DNA and to uh, eliminate fluorescence. So the fluorescence ge is generated um, when once the ethidium bromide tracks some DNA or binds to its minor group. So there are some uh, critical things that we have to keep in mind while preparation of DNA or uh, while loading of DNA. The ethidium uh, which we usually use as an intercalating dye should be uh, just poured into the solution, should be added into the solution once the solution is cooled down like egg rose gel and the 1x TAE or TBE buffer that has been used as a solvent should be this mixture should be cooled down to a temperature that is bearable by your hand so uh, you, sh uh, you can avoid some ethidium bromide breaching and when you're loading the gel just keep in mind that the pipetting should be very uh, gentle you shouldn't uh, just quickly or vigorously mix this uh, DNA with the bromophenol blue because the uh, vigorous pipetting normally let the air bubbles to accumulate and then when once the air bubbles are accumulated there's a chance of uh, not accurate loading or you can say that some of the DNA might come just above this uh, well. So you have to keep uh, these things in mind and uh, once you're loading the DNA try not to keep your hand hanging over the gel just try to mix it and then give a little support to your hand that you can load it. So coming back to 1% egg rose gel. For the preparation of 1% egg rose gel, we normally use two kind of buffers. That are Tris, EDTA, TBE and TAE. Tris, boric acid and EDTA and Tris, acetic acid and EDTA. Or, and one thing else, there is, uh, they are dependent upon the concentration. Like what kind of concentration are you using? Uh, when you prepare this stock solutions, they are normally in the concentrated form. That is normally uh, 10x or 50x or something. 
So for you to use them in the working solution or the in working state, you have to dilute them. So right now over here, you can see that I'm using 1x TAE. I've already prepared it and it is uh, autoclaved. The bottle was autoclaved. So the running buffer over here and the buffer in which I have prepared the gel is 1x TAE. Uh, now, after... Uh, after this loading, I need to just run, I would just run the uh, DNA and I will provide it current. It would be connected to this power supply over here. You can see the power supply is also present. And the purpose of this power supply is to provide the material, the current that it can uh, gain from charge. We use one KB DNA marker for comparative analysis. Like the DNA mark, we need a, a fragment of known size or a control that we use to compare the rest of the samples to. So we are using over here one KB DNA letter that has been already synthesized and is commercially available. And uh, it is the concentration of this letter is 50 microgram. And as we know that genomic DNA or total genomic DNA is quite heavier in nature and it's uh, product fragment length is quite intact and it's high so it would lie somewhat up mm, quite up than the uh, first starting uh, fragment of DNA mm, of this marker so I've, I'm loading 2.5 microliter of this DNA marker After loading the DNA marker, the loading uh, procedure of this gel has been completed. Now it's time to provide current and voltage for the movement of these DNA molecules across the gradient. As you all know that DNA is negative in charge, so it would move from the um, negative terminal towards the positive terminal. Over here you can see there are two different terminals that have been provided by this power supply, that are connected to this power supply. The main thing that we usually uh, haphazardly do or sometimes miss that we do not con uh, connect these power uh, terminals on each of the end, like correctly. So this, the black color power terminal is used for the negative uh, charge and whereas the white color, uh, red color is used for the positive charge. So each of the uh, these uh, electrodes are connected to their required if you are connecting the negative region over there that means the DNA would move across the chart that it would move from the negative terminal towards the positive terminal that is as per its charge ratio like how uh, as you all know that DNA is negative in charge so it would move across the gradient of the charges Whereas the function of the buffer is to provide the ions for the movement of these uh, DNA molecules across the gel and uh, the current is being provided by this power supply. As you all know, as I've already discussed in this uh, session, that DNA is heavier in nature. Now I'll set different parameters for running the gel. So voltage that we normally use uh, is 75 volts. Why is it 75 volts? Why isn't it 100 or something? Because DNA is heavier, so it requires quite a large charge for its uh, quite a low charge, and the uh, time duration must be quite enough for its movement across the gel. So I, will, I have set voltage as 75 volts, current as 160 milliampere, power is 300 watt. Whereas time, I usually keep it for one hour. One hour is enough time which can be given to a DNA molecule to move. Whereas if you compare it with the PCR gel or the two person gel, uh, the time duration is also limited, but the current is higher as compared to the DNA gel. All of the parameters are set. Now I would press run. The bubble are rising from this end and as you can see, this shows that the or both of the electrodes are attached properly and now the current is passing through this entire uh, gel electrophoresis tank. That means that it would provide mobility for the DNA molecules. 
and after one hour we will visualize the gel and we will see that how accurate, how, how was the extraction, how are the DNA molecules, either the DNA is shared or it's intact or we need some other remedies to reform our protocol or to change few things. This is all for today's session. Uh, we will stay connected for another session in which I will teach you how to visualize the DNA gel and how to troubleshoot if there are any errors or any uh, troubles while extracting the DNA. So I hope you people got it informative and we would be doing a lot of stuff and we'll explore this dimension of molecular biology in our upcoming videos. Thank you for my side.